so much, please. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. All ye lands. All ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord. Know ye that the Lord. He is God. He is God. It is he that hath made us. It is he that hath made us. And not we ourselves. And not we ourselves. We are his people. We are his people. And the sheep of his pasture. And the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving. And into his courts with praise. And into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him. Be thankful unto him. And bless his name. And bless his name. For the Lord is good. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. His mercy is everlasting. And his truth endure to all generations. And his truth endure to all generations. Our scripture reading this morning came from the 100th chapter of Psalms. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of the word. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I want to thank Brother Terrence for the reading of the scripture. Most excellent scripture. And in line with today's topic. I want to say good afternoon to the sons and daughters of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob here in class. And as always, it is an honor to stand before you. The title of today's lesson, brothers and sisters, is Spiritual Warfare. Spiritual Warfare, brothers and sisters. This war actually started, brothers and sisters, it started in heaven. The war started in heaven. Satan lost that battle. But the war continued when he came to this earth, brothers and sisters. Yes. Yes. Now the battlefield has changed, brothers and sisters. It has changed from heaven to between your ears. That's where, where the real fight is at, brothers and sisters. This battle is for your mind and for your heart and soul, brothers yeah. and sisters. Yeah. That's what this battle is all about. Yeah. You have Jesus, he's the general on one side. And you got Satan, he's the general on the other side, brothers and sisters. And there's a war that's going on. And this battle, brothers and sisters, is for your salvation. We're going to start this out. This ain't, this ain't no milk lesson. So this, this might be a little hard to understand. If you have some problems with your understanding, we can talk after. Amen. We're going to start this out in Revelation, the 12th chapter. And we're going to pick it up where I, where I led off at, where this battle actually began at. Pick it up in Revelation, the 12th chapter, and pick it up in verse 7. Go ahead, brother. And there was a war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels, and prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. So they lost. The dragon lost, brothers and sisters. He lost that battle in heaven, and something happened to him. Go ahead. And the great dragon was cast out. He lost the battle in heaven, and he was cast out. Go ahead. That old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. What did he do, Terrence? Deceiveth the whole world. He deceiveth the whole world. Go ahead. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Now, he lost the battle in heaven, brothers and sisters, but he, he continued with the war, brothers and sisters, and he continued with the war in the earth, brothers and sisters. Skip down to verse 3. Oh, uh, yes, sir. Thank you, brother, for reminding me. I'm, actually, I want you to read. I want you to skip back up to verse 3 and read verse 3 and then go there. Pick it up at 3. Verse 3, 
And there appeared another wonder in heaven. And behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns, and seven crowns upon his head. Read. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven. And his tail drew the third part of the stars in heaven. These were the angels that were kicked out with him, brothers and sisters. Didn't it tell us up there in, in seven that his, his angels were kicked out with him, brothers and sisters? These are the angels. These angels that were kicked out with him, brothers and sisters, these people, are, these beings are called demons, brothers and sisters. I want you to go to uh, Donovan's Bible Dictionary. I want you to go to page 131, and I want you to read, what is that, demons? Demons. Go ahead and read that, brother. Invisible, incorporeal. Read, read, the, read the topic, then read the uh, definition. Demons. 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 Go ahead. Evil spirits. These are evil spirits that were kicked out with Satan. One third of all the angels. And that, that's a number that's innumerable, brothers and sisters. That doesn't tell you how many it is. It's just a whole lot of them. One third of an innumerable number. That's a lot, brothers and sisters. I want you to pick it up at three again. Go ahead and read. And there appeared another wonder in heaven. And behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns, and seven crowns upon his heads. And his tail drew the third part of the stars in heaven. These are those demons, brothers and sisters. Go ahead. And did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be to look, delivered, or to devour her child as soon as it was born. And the dragon stood before the woman, which is Israel, which was ready to be delivered, for to, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. So this battle started in heaven, brothers and sisters, and it continued down to the earth, brothers and sisters, I want you to go to Isaiah, the 14th chapter. There's a spiritual battle that's going on, brothers and sisters. This spiritual battle it is going on for your salvation. So it wasn't enough that he lost in heaven, brothers and sisters. He's going to continue the battle here on earth, brothers and sisters. He didn't give up. He continued to fight. And now the battlefield, the battleground that he's fighting for, brothers and sisters, is your mind. Isaiah the 14th chapter, and pick it up at verse 12. Go ahead. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? This Lucifer, brothers and sisters, that's none other than that great dragon, Satan the devil. Go ahead. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. Wait a minute. If he's going to ascend, brothers and sisters, doesn't that mean that he had to descend first? Mm -hmm. He got kicked out. Mm -hmm. He got descended. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? He said, I will ascend into heaven. That means he's going to go mm -hmm. back. As a matter of fact, he's the only one that wants to get back into heaven, right. brothers and sisters. Right. The scripture tells us no man has entered into heaven except for he that came down from heaven. He says, I will ascend. The, go ahead. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. It wasn't enough, brothers and sisters. That he was, uh, he was a chair of angels, brothers and sisters. He wanted to be very God himself, brothers and sisters. As a matter of fact, that's what got him kicked out. Go ahead and read. Verse 14. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. He says, I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. In other words... I am going to be very God himself, brothers and sisters. And that's what he is on this planet, brothers and sisters. He is the prince of the power of the air, brothers and sisters. Let's go to uh, Ezekiel the 28th chapter. 
and take another look at it. For those of you who missed the opening, brothers and sisters, the title of the lesson is Spiritual Warfare. The war started in heaven, and it is continued here on this earth. And the battleground, brothers and sisters, is your mind and your heart, brothers and sisters. That's where the battle is at. Between your ears, that's where the battle is at nowadays, brothers and sisters. Ezekiel 28, and pick it up at verse 1. Ezekiel 28 and 1. Go ahead and read, brother. The word of the Lord came again unto me, saying, Son of man, say unto the prince of Tyrus, Thus saith the Lord God, Because thine heart is lifted up, and thou hast said, I am a God, I sit in the seat of God, in the midst of the seas. Yet thou art a man. We know that he is an angel. Go ahead. And not God. Though thou set thine heart as the heart of God. Read. Behold, thou art wiser than Daniel. He says, Behold, thou art wiser than Daniel. Daniel was one of the wisest men that's ever been on the planet, brothers and sisters. And this, this being, this, this angel, the Lord says about him, he is wiser than Daniel, brothers and sisters. Go ahead and read. There is no secret that they can hide from thee. And that there is no secret that we can hide from him. He can, as a matter of fact, we're going to look into the scriptures, brothers and sisters, and the Lord is going to tell him in the scriptures, he's going to tell Peter that Satan had decide, the desire to sift him like wheat, yes. brothers and sisters. Ain't nothing you can do to hide. He knows all of your most intricate secrets, brothers and sisters. He's an angel. He can look into your mind, brothers and sisters. Pick that up at two again, brother. No, pick it up at three. I'm sorry. Behold, thou art wiser than Daniel. There is no secret that they can hide from thee. With thy wisdom and with thine understanding, Thou hast gotten thee riches, and hast gotten gold and silver into thy treasures. By thy great wisdom, and by thy traffic, hast thou increased thy riches, and thine heart is lifted up because of thy riches. Therefore thus saith the Lord God, because thou hast set thine heart as the heart of God. Skip down to verse 11, brother, and continue. Because thou hast set thine heart as the heart of God, go ahead. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, take up lamentations upon the king of Tyrus. Understand something, brothers and sisters. Prince of Tyrus, king of Tyrus, one and the same, brothers and sisters. Go ahead and read. That's the same being. Go ahead. And say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God, Thou sealest up the sum, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Thou sealest up the sun, full of wisdom, and perfect in beauty. This being, this being was beautiful, brothers and sisters. He was covered with all types of precious metals and, and, and pearls and diamonds and things. He was beautiful. As a matter of fact, his beauty was so beautiful, he tricked Eve in the garden. Go ahead and read. Thou hast been in the Eden, the Garden of God. We're going to take a look at who was in Eden, the Garden of God. Go ahead. Every precious stone was thy covering. The sardis, topaz, and the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, and the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle, and gold. The workmanship of thy tabard and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou was created. Now the Lord is going to tell us exactly who this being is, brothers and sisters. Go ahead and read. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth. You are the anointed cherub that covereth. Go ahead. And I have set thee so. And I made you so. Go ahead. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Thou wast perfect in the way from the day that thou was created till iniquity 
was found guilty. You see what he says by Ezekiel? He said, Thou was perfect in thy ways from the day that thou was created. He was, Satan was not, uh, uh, Lucifer was not created a demon, brothers and sisters. He was created a cherub angel. He made himself a demon, brothers yeah. and sisters. He made himself a demon, brothers and sisters, because he wanted to ascend his throne above the heights of God. He wanted to be like the Most High. He says, Thou art the anointed cherub that covered, and I have set thee so. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Thou wast perfect in thy ways from the day that thou was created, till sin was found in thee. What was the sin? I will ascend, I will ascend above the heights of the cloud. I will be like the most high. Go ahead and read. Verse 16. By the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with violence, and thou hast sinned. Therefore I will cast thee as a profane out of the mountain of God, and I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. Wait a minute, you see what he said right there? You see what the Lord said? Did you catch that? He said, and I will destroy thee, O covering chair, yeah. mm -hmm. from the midst of the stones of fire. Go ahead and read. Verse 17, thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. I will cast This thee brightness here, brothers and sisters, that means intelligence. By the brightness, by your intelligence. Go ahead. I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings, that they may behold thee. Thou hast defiled the sanctuaries by the multitude of thine iniquities, by the iniquity of thy traffic. Therefore will I bring forth a fire from the midst of thee. It shall devour thee, and I will bring thee to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all them that behold thee. Understand something, brothers and sisters. There's only two kinds of, there's only two types of bodies, brothers and sisters. You have a spiritual body, and you have a fleshly body. Spiritual bodies do not die, brothers and sisters. Come here, here, sister. Spiritual bodies do not die. Uh, so God had to create a punishment for these angels, those angels that got kicked out he had to form a, he had to create a punishment that would be commensurate with the evil that they had done. So this, this uh, punishment that he created for them, that was the lake of fire. Let's go to Matthew, the 25th chapter. Lake of fire was not created for man, brothers and sisters. We forced our way into it by breaking God's law. <clears throat> Matthew 25 and 41. Go ahead, brother. Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. You see that, brothers and sisters? The lake of fire was created for the devil and his angels. It was not created for man, brothers and sisters. But just like everything else, we forced our way into it, brothers and sisters, by sinning against our God. Let's go to Genesis, the second chapter. Now we're going to take a look. It's, the scripture said, Thou hast been in Eden. The mountain of God that has walked up and down in the, in the midst of the stones of fire. We're going to find out what that was talking about. Who was it that was in the garden, brothers and sisters? Who was it that was in the garden? Genesis, the second chapter, and I want you to pick it up at verse 7, brother. Go ahead. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of, of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became 
a living soul. Go ahead and read. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight, and for good, and good for food. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. The tree of life and the tree of knowledge of good and evil, these are symbolic, brothers and sisters. They represent something else. Skip down to verse uh, 15. And the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. So the Lord, the Lord God gave man a job, brothers and sisters, something for him to do while he was down here, brothers and sisters. He wasn't just laying in the garden eating apples, brothers and sisters. Go ahead and read. Verse 16. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. What, does that say he asked the man? Commanded. He commanded the man. It says, And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. Go ahead. But the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. He says, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Read the next verse. And the Lord God said, it is not good that man should be alone. I will make him and help me for him. So he made a help me for him, and that help me was Eve. Skip down to verse 21. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman mm -hmm. and brought her unto the man. Mm -hmm. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones. And flesh of my flesh, she shall be called woman, because she was taken out of man. Mm -hmm. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother, and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. Mm -hmm. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and they were not ashamed. So who do we have in the garden, brothers and sisters? We had the Lord who is the tree of life. We had Satan, who is the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. We had Adam, and we had Eve. Let's move on a little bit further. You stopped at 25? Yes. Let's go into the third chapter and pick it up at verse 1. Go ahead. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, have God said ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. How'd she know that? How'd she know that? Because her husband told her, brothers and sisters. Her husband told her. Because she wasn't there when, when, when God told Adam that. That's right. Go ahead and read. Verse 4. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. I want you to, we're going we're gonna to focus on this for just a few minutes, brothers and sisters, because it's very important. Satan just called God a liar, brothers and sisters. He just called God a liar. Because did not God tell them that in the day they eat thereof, they would surely die? What does he turn around and tell them? Ye shall not surely die. Ye shall not surely die. So he called the creator a liar, brothers and sisters. This is a continuation of the battle that happened in the heavens, brothers and sisters. The war is continuing. I want you to see the big picture, brothers and sisters. There was a battle that started in heaven that's continuing down here on the earth. And the prize, brothers and sisters, is your mind. 
your salvation. The battle continues, brothers and sisters. Ye shall not surely die. He lied to him. Keep reading. Verse 5. For God doeth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Hold on a second. I want you to pay particular attention to this, brothers and sisters, because this is the template that God, that Satan's ministers use to this very day, brothers and sisters. What he just told them there was true. That's the way they do it, brothers and sisters. They don't tell you all lies, brothers and sisters. They sprinkle a little truth in it, brothers and sisters, so that it can be palatable to you. You understand? Because if you just stand here and lie to me and lie to me and lie to me, I might figure it out. But if you throw a little truth in there every now and then, that's confusing the people sometimes. You understand what I'm saying? So they sprinkle a little truth in it, and then they tell half a truth is still a lie. Right. You understand what I'm saying? Right. You ain't telling me the whole truth. So it's still a lie. Yeah. Go ahead and read. Read that again, brother. Verse 5. Yes, sir. For God doeth know that in the days ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and the tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to that, it was pleasant, brothers. Do you remember? It was covered in diamond and gold and carbuncles and sapphire. This thing was beautiful, and it was probably as bright because angels are spirits, brothers and sisters, and they shine, brothers and sisters. So it said it was pleasant to the eyes. And a tree to be desired to make one wise. And I don't care how many apples you eat. You can eat a whole apple orchard, brothers and sisters. And that ain't going to make you smart, brothers and sisters. Right, right. What makes you wise, brothers and sisters? Knowledge. Right. Read books. That's right. Get in talk what does say the Lord. That's what makes you wise, brothers right. and sisters. That's right. Eating apples don't make you wise. It might keep you a little, a little more healthy. Because they used to say the saying used to be an apple a day keeps the doctors away. But it's not going to make you wise. So she took of the fruit thereof. What was the fruit, brothers and sisters? It was knowledge. He told them something, brothers and sisters. And they did eat. And she gave also unto Adam. And Adam did eat. Now Adam had the opportunity to say, hey, wait a minute. I ain't eating that. I don't want to hear that. Go on over to the other side of the garden for a while and just chill. I don't want to hear that mess. Had he done that, brothers and sisters, we might have become the immortal beings that God set us out to be. Right. That's right. But he listened to his wife, brothers and sisters. And what happened? Verse 7, and the eyes of them both were open, and they knew that they were naked. Well, wait a minute. Genesis, the second chapter, verse 25 said, and they were both naked, the man and his wife, and they were not ashamed. Now, all of a sudden, brothers and sisters, he done told them, y'all know y'all ain't got no clothes on? <laughs> now, they know that they naked, brothers and sisters. And what happened? Go ahead. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. <coughs> and they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked. And I hid myself. And watch what the Lord is going to say to him. Go ahead. And he said, who told thee thou was naked? Who told you that you was naked? Go ahead. Hast thou eaten of the tree where I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? Read. And the man said, the woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. And, and he said, and the man said, 
the woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. That was true, but he didn't have to eat it. You understand what I'm saying? Do her under the bus. Yep. I tried to avoid that, sister. I, I, I didn't want to say it. I didn't want to say it. I didn't want to say it, sister. I said it for you. But, but, ain't no, wait, wait, hold it. The, the truth of the matter is, regardless of what she said, he did not have to do it. That's right. He chose to do it. You understand what I'm saying? He chose to listen to her rather than to listen to his wife. Uh, he chose to listen to his wife rather than to listen to God. Keep reading. Verse 13. And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. The serpent deceived me, and I did eat. Well, didn't the scripture in Revelation tell us that he deceived the whole world, brothers and sisters? And that's what his job is, brothers and sisters. That is his doctrine, brothers and sisters. His doctrine is to deceive, to lie, brothers and sisters. Skip down to verse uh, 17, brother, and continue. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns also, and thistles shall bring, it shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. Well, hold, let's, 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 let's do a little summary, a little quick check right here. Hold on a second. The battle started in heaven, right? It continued down here on the earth, right? The very first man that was created got deceived, right? So the battle continues, brothers and sisters. Right. I want you to understand, brothers and sisters, that the war has not stopped. That's right. He has always continued the battle, brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. Satan does not stop. I think there's a scripture that reads at some place over in Matthew. Where, where I think we're going to read it. It says, he leaves you for a season. You understand? After, after, you, after you stop him for a minute, stop him in his track, he's going to leave. Yeah. He's going to be back. That's Don't right. worry. That's right. He comes back, That's brothers right. and sisters. That's right. Continue to read, brother. Verse 19. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread, till thou return unto the ground. For out of it wast thou taken. For dust thou art, and unto dust thou return. Hold on a second. I did a funeral up here Wednesday, and, and, and the funeral director, he said, he, he made this statement right here. For dust thou art, and unto dust thou shalt thou return. So you know what that tells me? Then they know that you ain't going to heaven. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? They know. Huh? But they ain't if, you, if, you, if you read this, for dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return, then that means that you know that they ain't going to heaven. Well, why you say it then? That's the lie. It's the lie, sister. It's the lie. Go ahead, read. Verse 20. And Adam called his wife's name Eve, because she was the mother of all living. Unto Adam also, and to his wife, did the Lord God make coats of skin and clothe them. And the Lord God said... Something had to die, brothers and sisters. In order for them to be redeemed, some blood had to be shed, brothers and sisters. Go ahead, read. And the Lord God said, Behold, the man has become as one of us, to know good and evil. And now, lest he put forth his hand, and take also of the tree of life, and eat, and live forever. Therefore the Lord God sent him forth from the garden of Eden, to till the ground from whence he was taken. So he drove out the man, and he placed at the east of the garden of Eden cherubims, and a flaming sword which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. And now whenever you see the Lord, brothers and sisters, whenever the Lord shows up, those cherubim show up with him, brothers and sisters. Let's go to uh, Exodus, the 20th chapter. Exodus, the 20th chapter. 
Satan done got kicked out. He done brought the war to the earth. And he done killed the very first man. He done killed part of God's creation. Now this is Moses, brothers and sisters. <clears throat> and this is God getting ready to give Moses the Ten Commandments. And I want you to pay attention to what God is going to tell him there. Pick it up in 20 and verse 1. Go ahead and read. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the houses of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Very first thing he told them was, Thou shalt have no other gods before me, brothers and sisters. Do you know that there's over 330 million Hindu gods? Mm -hmm. Thou shalt have no other gods before me, brothers and sisters. Let's go to Psalms, the 78 chapter. Psalms, chapter 78. And we're going to pick it up at verse 4. Here in this 78th chapter, David is summarizing what took place when we came out of Egypt as a nation, brothers and sisters. Pick it up at verse 4. Go ahead and read. How oft did they provoke him in the wilderness? and grieve him in the desert. This is talking about Israel, brothers and sisters. Go ahead. Yea, they turned back and tempted God and limited the Holy One of Israel. They remember not his hand, nor the day when he delivered them from the enemy, how he had wrought his signs in Egypt and his wonders in the field of Zon, and had turned their rivers into blood and their floods that they could not drink. He sent diverse sorts of flies among them, which devoured them, and frogs which destroyed them. These were the Egyptians this was happening to, brothers and sisters. These were, for, let me rephrase that. This was for anybody that was not covered under that blood, brothers and sisters. Go ahead and read. Verse 46. He gave also their increase unto the caterpillar, and their labor unto the locusts. He destroyed their vines with hail, and their sycamore trees with frost. He gave up their cattle also to hell and their flocks to hot thunderbolts. He cast upon them the fierceness of his anger, wrath and indignation and trouble and send, by sending evil angels among them. By doing what? By sending evil, evil angels. angels among them, brothers and sisters. See, that just didn't, all of those signs and wonders, that didn't hap happen by happenstance, brothers and sisters. Those angels did that, brothers yes, and sisters. Yes. Those were those angels that did that. Let's go to Job, the first chapter. Job, chapter 1. Everybody know the story of Job? The battle is going to continue, brothers and sisters. Go to Job, the first chapter. And pick it up in verse 1. Go ahead. There was a man in the land of Uz, whose name was Job, and that man was perfect and upright, and one that feared God and eschewed evil. Now, if the Lord calls you perfect and upright, you are perfect and upright, brothers and sisters. Go ahead and read. And there were born unto him seven sons and three daughters. His substance also was 7,000 sheep and 3,000 camels, and 500 yoke of oxen, and 500 she-asses, and a very great household, so that this man was the greatest of all men of the east. And his sons went and feasted in their houses, every one his day, and sent and called for their three sisters to eat and drink with them. And it was so, when the days of their feasting were gone about, that Job sent and sanctified them, and rose up early in the morning and offered burnt offering, offerings according to the number of them all. For Job said, It may be that my sons have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. Thus did Job continually. He was proactive. 
He was doing some proactive uh, uh, sacrificing, brothers and sisters. Yeah. You know what? I'm not sure. I don't know. But just in case, yeah. let me let me sacrifice this lamb or let me sacrifice this option. Just in case one of my kids and did something they had no business doing. Go ahead, read. Yeah. Verse 6. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan came also among them. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan came also among them. Go ahead. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and upright man, one that feareth God and ensueth evil? Then Satan answered, the Lord and said, Do Job fear God for not? Hast thou not made and hedge about him and about his house and about all that he hath on every side? Thou hast blessed the work of his hands and his substance is increased in the land. But put forth thine hand now and touch all that he hath and he will curse thee to thy face. Read. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he hath in, it, in thy power. I, I want you to pay attention to that, brothers and sisters. What did, he, what did the Lord say? And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he hath is in thy power. All that he hath is in thy power. You are the hand of the Lord. Y'all can get it. Who did he use in, in Egypt? He used those evil angels, brothers and sisters. Yeah. Who is he using to vex Job? He's using Satan, brothers and sisters. Go ahead and read. Only upon himself put not forth thy hand. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord, and there was a day when his sons and his daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. And there came a messenger unto Job and said, the oxen were plowing, and the asses feeding beside them, and the Sabians fell upon them and took them away. Yea, they have slain the servants with the edge of the sword, and I only am escaped alone to tell thee. Read. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, The fire of God is fallen from the heaven, and hath burned up the sheep and the servants, and consumed them. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, The Chaldeans made out three bands, and fell upon the camels, and have carried them away, yea, and slain the servants with the edge of the sword. And I only am escaped alone Do to tell thee. You see all thee. that pressure that's coming down on this brother? One calamity after another. Just one right after another, after another, after another. It was enough to make you blow your mind, brothers and sisters. One terrible event after another. But go ahead and read. Verse 18. While he was yet speaking, there came also another, and said, Thy sons and thy daughters were eating and drinking wine in their elder's brother's house. And behold, there came a great wind from the wilderness, and smote the four corners of the house, and it fell upon the young men, and they are dead. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. Then Job arose, and rent his mantle, and shaved his head, and fell down upon the ground, and worshipped. And said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. And the Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And all this Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. You see that, brothers and sisters? He says, in all of this, Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly, brothers and sisters. He, he held his faith, brothers and sisters. Go on into the second chapter and pick it up at verse 1. Go ahead. Again, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan came also among them to present himself before the Lord. 
And the Lord said unto Satan, From whence comest thou? And Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that feareth God and ensueth evil? And still he holdeth fast his integrity, although thou movest me against him to destroy him without cause. And Satan answered the Lord and said, Skin for skin, yea, all that a man hath will he give for his life. But put forth thine hand now and touch his bone and his flesh, and he will curse thee to thy face. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, he is in thine hand, but save his life. Did you catch that, brothers and sisters? That's the second time. I didn't say it the first time, but this is the second time, brothers and sisters, that he said this, brothers and sisters. This is just to let you know that Satan is not a free agent, brothers and sisters. Right. Controlled by God. <laughs> Satan follows orders, brothers and sisters. Right. That's right. Satan follows orders. What did the Lord say? Behold, he is in thine hand, but save his life. Go ahead. Verse 7. So went Satan forth from the presence of the Lord and smote Job with sore boils from the sole of his foot unto his crown. And he took him a posture to scrape himself withal. And he sat down among the ashes. Then said his wife unto him, Dost thou still retain thy integrity? Curse God and die. Then said his wife unto him, Dost thou still retain thine integrity? Curse God and die. Watch what Job is going to say to her. Go ahead. But he said unto her, Thou speakest as one of the foolish women speaketh. What shall we receive, good at the hand of God? And shall we not receive evil? And all this did not Job sin with his lips. Are you blessing the Lord and blessing the Lord and blessing the Lord as long as things is going good? But the minute something starts to go bad, brothers and sisters, what do you do? Are you holding your integrity like Job? You understand what I'm saying? Because the same one that was giving you the blessing is the same one that is, that is allowing this other thing to have happen to you. Why he's doing it that way, God knows. You understand what I'm saying? Your job is to hold your integrity, whether it's good or whether it's evil. It's the same God overall, brothers and sisters. Let's go to Job, the 42nd chapter. Job chapter 42. And we're going to pick it up at verse 10. Job 42 and 10. Go ahead and read. And the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. Also the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. Understand that uh, Job had, uh, had this colloquy with his three friends, brothers and sisters, and then God told them that they wasn't they wasn't upright and as righteous as Job, and he said that Job was going to pray for him, and Job prayed for him, and Job received twice as much. Go ahead. Then came there unto him all his brethren and all his sisters, and all they had, had been of his acquaintance before and did eat bread with them in his house. And they bemoaned him and comforted him all over him over all the evil that the Lord had brought upon him. Did you catch that, brothers and sisters? It says, all the evil that the Lord had brought upon him. Go ahead. Every man also gave him a piece of money and every one an earring of gold. So the Lord blessed the, so the, Lord blessed the latter end of Job more than his beginning. For he had 14,000 sheep and 6,000 camels and a 1,000 yoke of oxen and a 1,000 she asses. He had also seven sons and three daughters. And he called the name of the first Jemima and the name of the second Keziah and the name of the third Kirin Habchu. 
And in all the land were no woman found so fair as the daughters of Job, and their father gave them inheritance among the brethren. After this lived Job a hundred and forty years, and saw his sons and his sons' sons, even four generations. So Job died being an old, being old and full of days. Why, brothers and sisters? Because he held on to his integrity. Even though he went through all of those tremendous things, brothers, horrible things, brothers and sisters. He lost all of his, he lost all of his uh, uh, prosperity, brothers and sisters. He lost his children that were born to him. But he held his faith, brothers and sisters. That's what we have to do. We have to hold on to our faith in the good times, brothers and sisters, and in the bad. Let's move on a little bit further. Because there's a battle that's going on, brothers and sisters. You either following the Lord, brothers and sisters, or you following Satan. Right. Let's go to 1 Timothy, the fourth chapter. Because the battle is going to continue. Ain't no middle ground. What they call that place? Purgatory. Ain't no purgatory, brothers and sisters. First Timothy, the fourth chapter. And we're going to pick it up at verse 1. First Timothy 4 and 1. Go ahead, brother. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter time some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Giving heed to seducing spirits. What are these seducing spirits? Seducing spirits are spirits that lead to error, brothers and sisters. Giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Well, what is the doctrine of, of, of the devils, brothers and sisters? It's the lies and deception, isn't it? Didn't we read that? That's right. What did Satan do? Didn't he deceive the whole world? How did he do that? By lying, brothers and sisters. Go ahead and read. Speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry, and commanding to abstain from meats, which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good, and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving. And they'll go there, brothers and sisters, and tell you that you can eat anything, brothers and sisters. But God has a dietary law, brothers and sisters. Check that before you put anything in your mouth. And if you check that and eat according to the dietary law, then you've done well. He said, for every creature of God is good. And nothing to be received if it be received with thanksgiving. Keep, keep your finger there. I'm, I'm going to take you someplace up. Go to Genesis, the first chapter. Genesis, the first chapter. And read that 31st verse, brother. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. Hold on a second. God said it was very good, brothers and sisters. Everything that he had made was very good, brothers and sisters. But everything that he made was not very good to be eaten, brothers and sisters. Go ahead, read. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. Go back to uh, 1 Timothy, the fourth chapter, and I want you to pick it up at verse 4. Go ahead. For every creature of God is good, and nothing to be refused, if it be received with thanksgiving. For it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. And where is it sanctified at, brothers and sisters? In Leviticus, the 11th chapter. Go ahead and read. If thou put the brethren in remembrance of these things, thou shalt be a good minister of Jesus Christ. Nourish up in the words of faith and of good doctrine. Whereunto thou hast attained. He said, if thou put the brethren in remembrance of these things, thou shalt be a good minister of Jesus Christ, nourished up in the words of faith and of good doctrine, whereunto thou hast attained. Let's move on a little bit further. Let's go to John the 8th chapter. 
We're talking about a spiritual war that's going on between your ears, brothers and sisters. Why do you think the world is in the condition that it is today, brothers and sisters? Because there's a spiritual battle that's going on, brothers and sisters. And most of the world is losing to Satan. You know how I know? Because if they weren't following Satan, there wouldn't be any room left in this building to contain them. Didn't God say the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord and that you were supposed to have a holy convocation? Where are they at? You understand what I'm saying? They losing the battle to Satan because some man has tricked them and told them that Paul broke bread on the first day of the week. Therefore, Sunday is the Sabbath of the Lord. They buying that. And you ain't got no book to prove that. You understand what I'm saying? They being deceived and eating it up. Paying them big time. They, they, they got the, what they call them trucks? They got the armored trucks pulling up to the churches and taking bags of money away from the church. Mm. We ask you to pay your tithes and you get grumpy. <laughs> <laughs> but we teach the truth we teach the truth and we ain't teaching it for money where we stop at Bruce John, John. John. I got caught up in my little PSA <laughs> John chapter 8 And we're going to pick it up at verse 39. John 8 and 39. When you get it, brother, go ahead and read. Here in this, here in this eight chapter, Jesus is talking to these Israelites. And he's going to tell them uh, that they are of their father the devil. Go ahead and read. Pick it up at 39. They answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. Jesus said unto them, if you were Abraham's children, ye would do the works of Abraham. But now ye seek to kill me, a man that had told you the truth, which I have heard of God. This did not Abraham. Ye do the deeds of your father. Then said they to him, We be not born of fornication. We have one father, even God. Jesus said unto them, If God were your father, ye would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Why do ye not understand my speech, even because ye cannot hear my words? Ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. What he tell them? Ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of the of your father ye will do. Go ahead. He was a murderer from the beginning. He was a murderer from the beginning. How did he commit murder, brothers and sisters? By telling them those lies, brothers and sisters. What was the lie, brothers and sisters? Ye shall not surely die. And then they proceeded to partake of that lie, brothers and sisters. And that brought about death, and when death, um, that brought about sin, and when sin entered into the world, it brought death, brothers and sisters. So he was a murderer. He didn't physically kill him, but the words that he used caused them to die. Go ahead and read. Right. And abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. Why? Because he told the very first one, brothers and sisters. He told the very first lie that was told on this planet. Go ahead and read. Well, he is a liar and the father of it. And because I tell you the truth, ye believe me not. Which of you, which of you convince me of sin? And if I say the truth, why do ye not believe me? He that is of God heareth God's word. He that is of God 
hear God's words. Go ahead. Yet therefore hear them not. Ye therefore hear them not, because ye are not of God. Ye therefore hear them not, because ye are not of God. And brothers and sisters, when you have ministry to people, don't be upset because they don't hear you, brothers and sisters. God might not have opened their eyes, ears, and understanding to the word yet. You understand what I'm saying? You plant a seed. You drop a seed here, and then you move on. Drop a seed there, and you move on, brothers and sisters. If, if the seed bear fruit, brothers and sisters, you understand, they might call you again. Or they might reach out and try to get in touch with you again. Don't get upset because they don't hear. Not their time yet. Let's move on a little bit further. Let's go to 2 Corinthians 11 chapter. Don't be trying to beat nobody over the head with this word of God, brothers and sisters. Because you know Israel... The harder you hit them in the head, brothers and sisters, the more mm-hmm. they're going to grit their teeth and not going to hear. I'm talking about us. Us. Mm-hmm. We can be very rebellious and stiff-necked. 2 Corinthians 11 chapter. There's a spiritual battle going on, brothers and sisters. And you are the prize. <laughs> Pick it up at verse 1. Go ahead and read. Would to God ye could bear with me a little in my folly, and indeed bear with me. For I am jealous over you with godly jealousy. For I despise you to one husband that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. But I fear, lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtly, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. For if he that cometh preaches another Jesus, for if he that cometh preaches another Jesus, well, Jesus of the, first, of the first day Saturday, ain't that another Jesus? That's not the Jesus of the Bible. Go ahead and read. Whom we have not preached, or if ye receive another spirit, which ye have not received, or another gospel, which ye have not accepted, ye might well bear with him. Let's get down to verse 13. For such are false apostles. So if, if they come into you, with another Jesus and another spirit and another gospel. These are false apostles, brothers and sisters. Go ahead. Deceitful workers. There's the key right there. Well, who is the father of deceit, brothers and sisters? And it's Satan the devil. Go ahead. Transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And what do they do? They transform themselves into the apostles of Christ. Go ahead, read. And no marvel. For Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Didn't he tell her something in the garden, brothers and sisters? Didn't he tell them something? What did he say, brothers and sisters? Y'all ain't got no clothes on. Y'all is naked. And all of a sudden, sin entered in because they done heard, they done partook of his knowledge brothers and sisters now they are ashamed and what did God say who told thee that thou was naked go ahead and read verse 15 therefore it is no great thing if his ministers also transform as the ministers of righteousness whose end shall be according to their works he says therefore it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness. In other words, they ain't going to come to you telling, hey man, you know, I'm, I'm an apostle of Satan. I'm trying everything I can do to get you into the lake of fire. They're going to come to you talking about, oh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on to God. 
Put some money in that tithe box. Don't forget the pastor's anniversary. <laughs> After the class is over, y'all go downstairs and get y'all a chitlin sandwich. <laughs> Ministers of Satan. Don't forget that, brothers and sisters. I think that we tend to forget that Satan has ministers. Many of them. How do you recognize them? How you recognize them, brothers and sisters? The word of God. True that. The word of God, brothers and sisters, by the things that they're doing. They're doing everything that's contrary to the word of God. They're doing everything that's contrary to the word of God and going to condemn you. <laughs> they're going to condemn you when you walk up to them with the book in your hand. They want to tell you, you don't know what you're talking about. My pastor said, pa pastor, pastor said, when your pastor going in the fire and you going with him, God did not have all this book written, brothers and sisters, for you to let somebody interpret to you what does say the Lord. Read it for yourself. Don't listen to me. Read it for yourself. Your salvation is at stake. I'm trying to work on mine. I love y'all dearly. But if you're going to get salvation, you're going to get it because you're going to do the things necessary for you to get it. Matthew, the 24th chapter. That dog collar tells off on him, too. What does that mean? Oh, that little white thing that works? Uh -huh. mm -hmm. <laughs> Did that originate with Roman Catholicism? Probably. Because we got them in there. We, we, got, we, got, we got them in there. We, 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 we getting close. We getting close. You say Matthew. Matthew, the 24th chapter. And we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Matthew 24 and 1. Go ahead, brother. And Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, There shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. And as he said upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and the end of the world? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. The very first thing he said was, Take heed that no man do what? Deceive you. Go ahead and read. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars, See that ye not be troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Read. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famine and pestilence and earthquakes in divers places. And all these are the beginning of sorrows. You say, for nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrow. And we're seeing some of those signs, brothers and sisters, as we speak. Skip down to verse 11. And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. And there's deception going on on every corner and two in the middle of the block, brothers and sisters. Deception is everywhere, brothers and sisters. Keep reading. And because iniquity shall abound, because sin shall abound, go ahead. The love of many shall wax cold. If you want, if you hear my voice, brothers and sisters, you know 
that the love of many has waxed cold. Because there is no compassion in the world today, brothers and sisters. They're killing babies, brothers and sisters. Shooting them in the head, brothers and sisters. Mothers killing their daughters. Mothers killing their sons. Fathers killing their children. It's going on everywhere, brothers and sisters. Go ahead and read. Verse 13. Children killing their dogs now. Too. Children killing their parents. Go ahead and read. But he that shall endure until the end, the same shall be saved. But he that shall endure until when? The end. The same shall be saved. Go ahead. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for witness unto all nations. And then shall the end come. In this time, brothers and sisters, that we're living in, this gospel of the kingdom can be preached in all of the world, brothers and sisters. You got the internet. You got Wi-Fi, brothers and sisters. We can broadcast into the deepest, darkest jungles of Africa, brothers and sisters. Go ahead and read. Verse 15. When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation, spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand alone in the holy place, whoso readeth, let him understand. Then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. He said, when ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation, they had asked him for a sign of the end times, brothers and sisters. And one of the signs that he's given them, brothers and sisters, is the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet. Let's go to 2 Thessalonians, the second chapter. They asked for a sign. He gave them one. End time sign. When he would be coming back. 2 Thessalonians. The second chapter. And pick it up in verse 1. Go ahead and read. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit nor by word, nor by letter as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means. There that deception is again, brothers and sisters. He keeps warning us to not allow anybody to deceive us, brothers and sisters. Go ahead and read. For that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that the man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposes and exalted himself above all that is called God, or that is worship, so that he is God, so that he, as God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Well, what did he say? I will ascend my throne above the, uh, the skies of... How did he go? I will ascend my throne above the stars of God. I will be like the Most High. Read that again, brother. Whoso opposes and exalted himself above all that is called God, or that is worship. So that he, as God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. This is Satan's representative, brothers and sisters. This is Satan's representative. Let's go to Daniel the 11th chapter. This is Satan's representative, brothers and sisters. This is how he promotes his doctrine, brothers and sisters. Through this organization. Daniel the 11th chapter. And pick it up at verse 31. Go ahead and read. An arm shall stand on his part. And they shall pollute the sanctuary of strength. And shall take away the daily sacrifice. And they shall place the abomination that make it desolate. An arm shall stand on his part. And they shall pollute the sanctuary of strength. And shall take away the daily sacrifice. Edom is going to build a third temple over there, brothers and sisters. And this man is going to leave Jerusalem, I mean, leave Rome and go and sit down there. They're going to be sacrificing, sacrificing animals again, brothers and sisters. And he's going to take away the daily sacrifice. And they shall place the abomination that make it desolate. Skip down to verse 36. Go ahead. And the king shall do according to his will. And he is a king, brothers and sisters. He's king of Vatican City, brothers and sisters. Or I, I, let me better say it this way. He is king of the Roman Catholic Church. 
Go ahead and read. And he shall exalt himself and magnify himself above every God and shall speak marvelous things against the God of gods and shall prosper till the indignation be accomplished. For that that is determined shall be done. Read. Neither shall he regard the God of his fathers. Neither shall he regard the God of his fathers. Go ahead. Nor the desire of women. Nor the desire of women. Go ahead. Nor regard any God. And he's not going to regard any God. Go ahead. For he shall magnify himself above all. And he's going to magnify himself above all, brothers and sisters. Skip down to verse 41. He shall enter also into the glorious land. What is the glorious land, brothers and sisters? All right. He shall enter also into the glorious land. Go ahead. And many countries shall be overthrown, but these shall escape out of his hand, even Edom and Moab and the chief of the children of Ammon. Even Edom and Moab and the chief of the children of Ammon. Skip down to verse 45 and continue. And he shall plant the tabernacles of his palace between the seas, in the glorious holy mountain. Yet he shall come to his end, and none shall help him. And he's going to plant his tabernacle of his palace between the seas and the glorious holy mountain. Yet he shall come to his end, and none shall help him. Let's go on a little bit further. Let's go to Revelation 17, chapter. Let's see this organization that he's sitting at the head of, brothers and sisters. That is none other than the Pope you just read about there, brothers and sisters. But you say they call him Papa. He is also called the Holy See. If you add one letter to that, what does that give you? See how they play with stuff? He's also called the Holy See. Let me take that off of there. I don't even like it on the board. <coughs> Revelation 17. Now we're getting ready to take a look at the organization that he sits at the head of, brothers and sisters. Pick it up at verse 1, brother. Go ahead. And there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vows, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show thee unto, unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. He says, with whom the kings of the earth have committed spiritual fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. Go ahead. So he carried me away. That's that bad doctrine that this, the Roman Catholic Church teaches, brothers and sisters. Yeah. Go ahead. Verse 3. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast full of names and blas of blasphemy having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in this purple. This is talking about the revised Roman Empire, brothers and sisters. Go ahead. And scarlet color, and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand, full of abominations and filthiness of her fornications. And if you wasn't born into this thing, brothers and sisters, you might be and took you a drink or two out of that cup. Go ahead, read. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery. Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots, an abomination of the earth. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots. That means that she got daughters, brothers and sisters. And who are our daughters, brothers and sisters? The Baptists, the Calvinists, all of those churches that do the uh, first day, Sabbath day. Go ahead and read. And some of them that do the, even the seventh day, Sabbath day, because... They have one thing right, that is that the seventh day is the Sabbath day, but everything else they got wrong. Go ahead and read. Verse 6. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. 
And when I saw her, I wondered with a great admiration. And the angel said unto me, Wherefore didst thou marvel? I will tell thee the mystery of the woman, and of the beast that carrieth her, which hath the seven heads and ten horns. Okay, we're getting ready to do a little uh, speed, speed check right here, brothers and sisters. Now, we know that this is the Catholic Church, brothers and sisters, and the Catholic Church is promoting doctrine that is contrary to the word of God, brothers and sisters. But you, you know that you got about 1.4 billion Catholics in the world, brothers and sisters, that are following the teachings of the Pope, brothers and sisters. You got about 1.4 billion Catholics. Go ahead and read. Verse 8. The beast that thou sawest was and is not, and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit, and go into perdition. And they that dwell on the earth shall wonder whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world. When they behold the beast that was and is not, and yet is. This beast that was and is not and yet is, that is talking about the Roman Empire, the revised Roman Empire, brothers and sisters. Go ahead and read. And here is the mind which hath wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sitteth. And Rome sits on seven mountains, brothers and sisters. Keep your finger here because we will be coming back. But let's go over to Revelation, the 12th chapter. Remember, this lesson, brothers and sisters, is about spiritual warfare, brothers and sisters. Spiritual warfare. Revelation 12, and I want you to pick it up at verse 9. Go ahead and read, brother. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil, and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. This was in heaven, brothers and sisters. Remember, he got cast out to the earth, brothers and sisters. Go ahead and read. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they love not their lives unto the death, unto the death. Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. What do you say? Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. Why? For the devil has come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. You see that, brothers and sisters? The devil has come down unto you having great wrath, brothers and sisters, because he knows that he ain't got but a short time. Go ahead and read. Verse 13. And when the dragon saw that he was cast out of the earth, cast onto the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man child. That's Israel, brothers and sisters. And who is this man child? That's none other than Jesus. Go ahead. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness, into her place where she is nourished for a time and times and a half a time from the face of the serpent. And this is end time, brothers and sisters. This is talking about the great tribulation, brothers and sisters. And the great tribulation is going to last three and a half years. Go ahead. Verse 15. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman, that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. And the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood, which the dragon cast out of his mouth. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Who is that? Yes. Who is that? Who is that? That's us, brothers and sisters. That's us. Because the rest of the world, 99.9% of the world is not keeping the commandments of God. This remnant here, brothers and sisters, this is talking about us. Go back to Revelation, the 17th chapter, 
And pick it up at verse 11, brother. Go ahead and read. And the beast that was and is not, even he is the eighth and is the seventh and goeth into perdition. And the ten horns which were, which thou sawest are ten kings, which have received no kingdom as yet, but receive power as king one hour with the beast. This is the revised Roman Empire, brothers and sisters. Watch this next verse. Go ahead. These have one mind. These have one mind, brothers and sisters. Go ahead and read. And shall give their power and strength unto the beast. Go ahead. These shall make war with the land. And they're going to make war with Jesus, brothers and sisters. You know how that's going to turn out. Go ahead and read. And the land shall overcome them. For he is the Lord of lords and the king of kings. And they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. Yeah. And he saith unto me, The waters which thou sawest where the whore sitteth are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. The waters which thou sawest where the whore sitteth. And this whore, this great whore, this is talking about the, uh, the, the, um, the, Pope, the papacy, brothers and sisters, the Roman Catholic Church. The waters which thou sawest where the horse sitteth are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. Doesn't that make them a world ruler, brothers and sisters? Go ahead and read. Verse 16. And the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall hate the whore, and shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. For God hath put in their heart to fulfill his will and to agree. And give their kingdom unto the beast, until the words of God shall be fulfilled. And the woman which thou sawest is the great city, which shall reign it over the kings of the earth. And the woman which thou sawest is that great city, which reigneth over the kings of the earth, brothers and sisters. And that is none other than Rome. First Samuel the eighth chapter. There's a spiritual battle going on, brothers and sisters, for your mind, brothers and sisters. And this spiritual battle is being led by Satan, and he is using the Roman Catholic Church and all those that believe in the Roman uh, doctrine, brothers and sisters, to try and get you cut off, brothers and sisters, to try and get you cut off. 1 Samuel 8, <coughs> and pick it up at verse 1. Go ahead and read. And it came to pass, when Samuel was old, that he made his son judges over Israel. Now the name of his firstborn was Joel, and the name of his second, Abiah. They were judges in Beersheba. And his sons walked not in his ways, but turned aside after lucre and took bribes and perverted judgment. That sounds like the pastors of today, don't it? Go ahead and read. Then all the elders of Israel gathered themselves together and came to Samuel at Ramah and said unto him, Behold, thou art old, and thy sons walk not in thy ways. Now make us kings to judge us, to judge us like all the nations. Now make us a king to judge us like all the nations. Go ahead. But the thing displeased Samuel when they said, Give us a king to judge us. And Samuel prayed unto the Lord. And the Lord said unto Samuel, Hearken unto the voice of the people and all that they say unto thee. For they have not rejected thee, but they have rejected me, that I should not reign over them. And the Lord said unto Samuel, Listen unto the voice of the people in all that they say unto thee. For they have not rejected thee, but they have rejected me, that I should not reign over them. If the Lord is not reigning over you, brothers and sisters, you only have one other option that is reigning over you, brothers and sisters. Right. It's either the Lord or it's Satan. Ain't no middle ground. You, right. you ain't gonna you ain't gonna be standing on the fence when the Lord comes, brothers come on, and sisters. Come on. You're going to be either for the Lord or you're against him. 
call you. I, I think the Lord say in there, uh, you going you lukewarm. He gonna spew you out of his mouth. Yeah, you trying to ride the middle line. I ain't gonna do. I ain't gonna do too much good, and I ain't gonna do too much bad. I'm just gonna try to stay right here in the middle. Middle gonna get you killed. So the Lord say, listen to him, Samuel, for they have not rejected thee, but they have rejected me, that I should not reign over them. Let's go to Matthew, the fourth chapter. Matthew chapter four. Matthew chapter four. And this is after the baptism of Jesus. Right after he was baptized, he was spirited away into the wilderness. Now Satan is going to try and tempt him here in the wilderness, brothers and sisters. I want you to pay attention to what Jesus says to Satan, brothers and sisters, because this is the way that you combat him, brothers and sisters. When he comes to you, you know, when he, when he comes to you with those thoughts, brothers and sisters, you hit him with some scripture. Pick it up at verse 1. Go ahead. Then was Jesus led up of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward and hungry. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. What did he hit him with? He said, But he answered and said unto him, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Go ahead. Then the devil taketh him up into the holy city, and sitteth him on a pinnacle of the temple, and saith unto him, if thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou shalt dash thy foot against the stone. Understand what's taking place here, brothers and sisters. This is the Lord Jesus. This is the creator of heaven and earth, brothers and sisters. This is the one that created him, brothers and sisters. And here he is, he's trying to tempt the Lord, brothers and sisters. Understand, if he's going to tempt the Lord, he will tempt you as well. If he's going to tempt the Lord, he will tempt you as well. The most false prophet talking about I'll stand up against Satan. Man, you better sit down someplace. You ain't got nothing coming. The Lord gonna tell Peter here shortly that the Lord, uh, the Satan desired to sift him as wheat. He gonna look down into your DNA. Pick it up where you left off at, brother. Verse seven. Jesus said unto him, "It is written again, Thou shalt, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God." Again the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them and saith unto him, All these things will I give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Then you, say, you see that, brothers and sisters? His intent is still to be God, brothers and sisters. He's talking to the God that created him but he still, he, and says unto him, all these things will I give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Go ahead and read. Verse 10. Then said Jesus unto him, get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, thou shalt not worship, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shall thou serve. Then the devil leaveth him, and behold, his angels came and ministered unto him. 
And another scripture said, then the devils left him for a season, brothers and sisters. You know what that means? He gone for right now, but he'll be back. He'll be back. Let's move on a little bit further. Let's go to Luke 22nd chapter. I've been talking about it. I've been quoted it about two or three times. Let's read it now. Luke the 22nd chapter. We, say, we have to stay humble and faithful and girded with this word, brothers and sisters. Because you're going to be tempted. You're going to be tempted. Luke 22, and pick it up at verse 28. Go ahead. Ye are they which have continued with me in my temptation. He's talking to his disciples now. He said, ye are they which have been with me through my temptations. Go ahead. And I appoint unto you a kingdom, as my Father hath appointed unto me, that ye may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom, and sit on thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. You see that, brothers and sisters? He said, behold, Simon, Simon, Satan hath desired to sift you like wheat, brothers and sisters. You know what that means, brothers and sisters? That if you're walking in righteousness and doing the things of God, Satan wants to sift you like wheat, brothers and sisters. Let's move on a little bit further. Let's go to uh, we stop at 28. We stop at uh, 31. 31. Read the next verse. Verse 32. But I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. Jesus said, but I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. Go ahead. And when thou art converted, Strengthen thy brother. And when you are converted, Peter, strengthen up your brother. Hey, watch what Peter's going to say. Go ahead and read. And he said unto him, Lord. This is Peter talking. Go ahead. I am ready to go with thee, both into prison and to death. And he said. Jesus speaking. Go ahead. I tell thee, Peter, the cock shall not crow this day, before that thou shalt thrice deny that thou knowest me. I tell thee, Peter, the cock shall not crow this day, before that thou shalt thrice deny that thou knowest me. And he did that, brothers and sisters. Go ahead. And when he said unto him, when I sent you without purse. That's good. Let's move on a little bit further. Let's go to Revelation, the 13th chapter. So, so, so Peter's faith got shaken there a little bit, brothers and sisters. Because he, he followed Jesus when, when they took him, brothers and sisters. And they were standing out in the courtyard, and the lady said to him, Ain't you one of his? I did not see you over there. You one of them, ain't you? And no, ain't none of me. <laughs> no, that, that wasn't me. And somebody else confronted him, Hey, man, did not see you with him over in such and such a place? And no, no, that wasn't me. And then somebody else came to him, Yeah, that was you, man, because I recognize you. He said, No, man, that wasn't I me. Mean, he cussed. <laughs> that wasn't me. And the cock crew crow. Cock crow, brother. So Peter's faith got shaken. That don't mean, brothers and sisters, that he's not gonna be in the king. Because all of us get a little weak sometimes, brothers and sisters. We all get a little weak sometimes. But what we do, brush yourself up. Get back in that word, brothers and sisters, yes, and continue sir. that spiritual, godly walk. Repent. Amen. Amen. Let's move on a little bit further. Revelation, the 13th chapter. We're getting to the end, y'all. I didn't say we there yet. Revelation 13. This is the revised Roman Empire that we're getting ready to take a look at, brothers and sisters. Revelation 13, and pick it up at verse 1. Go ahead, brother. 
And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his head the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth is as the mouth of a lion. This is a composite beast, brothers and sisters. Go ahead. And the dragon gave him his power. Who's the dragon, brothers and sisters? Satan, Satan the devil. Go ahead. And his seat and great authority. And the dragon gave uh, Rome his, his power, his seat, and great authority. Go ahead. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death. And his deadly wound was healed. And all the world wondered after the beast. And they worshipped the dragon which gave power unto the beast. And they worship the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? And there was given unto him a mouth, speaking great things and blasphemies. And power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. Understand something, brothers and sisters. Uh, the Pope is called the beast, and the, the religious leader is called the beast, and the secular leader is called the beast as well and there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things didn't they say these have one mind brothers and sisters right. and there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemy and power was given unto him to continue 40 and two months how long is 40 and two months three and one half years go ahead and read and he opened his mouth in blasphemy against god to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven and it was given unto him to make war with the saints. To do what? To make war to with make the saints. To make war with who? The saints. To make war with the saints. Who the saints, brothers and sisters? None other than us, brothers and sisters. Saints, meaning separated, sanctified, separated, brothers and sisters. Separated from the world. We, we ain't following uh, uh, the Sunday Jesus, brothers and sisters. We following... The, the seventh day, Jesus, brothers and sisters. So we separate. Go ahead and read. And to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. Doesn't that make him a world ruling uh, empire, brothers and sisters? Go ahead. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Pray that your, your name is in that book, brothers and sisters. Right. Skip down to verse uh, 11. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spoke as a dragon. This is, this is the religious leader here, brothers and sisters. We just read about the secular leader. Now we're reading about the religious leader. Go ahead. And he exercises all the power of the first beast before him and causes the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men, and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth, by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth, that they should make an image of the beast, which had the wound by a sword, and did live. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and to cause that as many would not worship the image, the image of the beast should be killed. And he caused all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive the mark on their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. And that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark, or the number of the beast, or the number of his name. Let's go find out what that name is. Go ahead, a number is. Go ahead and read. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. And his number is six hundred, three score, and six. And that is vicarious philidae, brothers and sisters. And in Roman numerology, that equals six, 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 brothers and sisters. Let's move on a little bit further. Let's go to Revelation, the 20th chapter. Revelation, the 20th chapter. 
We talk more in Revelation today than most of those false prophets would teach in, in all of their lifetime, brothers and sisters. They try to avoid Revelation at all costs. Yeah, they don't want the plague. Revelation, the 20th chapter, and let's pick it up at verse 1. Go ahead and read. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil, and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil, and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. Go ahead and read. And cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up, and set a seal upon him, that he should deceive the nations no more. No more deceptions on the earth, brothers and sisters. Nothing but truth. Well, it's nothing but truth because this is Jesus' kingdom, brothers and sisters. Go ahead and read. Till the thousand years should be fulfilled, and after that he must be let loose a little season. And I saw thrones, and they that sat upon them, and the judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. Some of these, these people, brothers and sisters, when Christ comes back, he's going to change some of the righteous uh, living into immortals, brothers and sisters. Go ahead and read. Verse 5. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand years. I should have said, brothers and sisters, that he's going to raise the righteous dead and the righteous living brothers and sisters, and he's going to change them into immortals, and they're going to judge brothers and sisters. There's going to be two types of beings on the earth during Christ's uh, reign, brothers and sisters. You're going to have immortal, spiritual beings, and you're going to have fleshly beings as well. Let's go take a look at the flesh. Isaiah 65. Isaiah chapter 65. Isaiah 65, and I want you to pick it up at verse 17, and then I want you to skip down to verse 20. Read verse 17, and then skip to verse 20. Go ahead and read. For behold, I create new heavens and a new earth, and the former shall not be remembered nor come into mind. Skip down to verse 20. There shall be no more thence an infant of days, nor an old man that hath not filled his days. So, so people are still going to be uh, bearing, bearing children, brothers and sisters. There shall be no more thence an infant of days, nor an old man that had not filled his days. Go ahead. For the child shall die at a hundred years old. A child is going to die at a hundred years old, brothers and sisters. That's a long time, brothers and sisters. People are going to be living to 999 years, brothers and sisters. Go ahead and read. But the sinner being a hundred years old shall be accursed. Skip down to verse 24. And it shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer. And while they are yet speaking, I will hear. And the Lord says, and it shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer. And while they are yet speaking, I will hear. Go ahead and read. The wolf and the lamb shall feed together. The wolf and the lamb shall feed together. Have you seen a wolf and a lamb feeding together yet, brothers and sisters? <laughs> Go ahead and read. And the lion shall eat straw like the bullock. And the dust shall be the serpent's meat. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain, saith the Lord. He says, they shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain, saith the Lord. That dispels another lie that's been told, brothers and sisters, that Israel went back to the land in 1948, brothers and sisters. Because if Israel was back in the land at 1948, then they should not be hurting or destroying 
in his holy mount. So that right there just lets you know yeah. that Israel is not back in the yeah. land, brothers yeah. and sisters. Because there's still violence going on, brothers and sisters. Somebody is walking through the market today and they're going to pick up an apple off of a car, brothers and sisters, and a grenade will go off. So they're still hurting and destroying in this holy mount. Let's go back to Revelation, the 20th chapter. I should have told you to keep your hand there. I'm sorry. Revelation 20. And we're going to pick it back up at verse 6. Go ahead. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand years. They're going to reign with him a thousand years. Go ahead. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison, and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, God and Magog, to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. And they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about in the beloved city. And fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. And the fire came down and just, just devoured them. Go ahead. Verse 10. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are. These two men are going to be Satan into the lake of fire, brothers and sisters. The beast and the false prophet are going to be Satan into the lake of fire. Go ahead. And shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. And I saw a great right throne, throne and him that sat on it. This is Jesus, brothers and sisters. Go ahead. Go ahead. From whose face the earth and the heaven fled away. And there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were open. And another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And some people will tell you, you ain't got no works to do, brothers and sisters. But that's not what that scripture just read. Go ahead. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. And death and hell were delivered up delivered of the dead which were in them. And they that were judged every man according to their works. And they were judged every man according to their works. Go ahead. And death and hell were cast in the lake of fire. This is the second death. And this is the second death, brothers and sisters. Go ahead and read. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. You want to make sure you get your name in that book of life, brothers and sisters. It's imperative that you do so. Let's go to uh, 1 Peter, the fifth chapter. 1 Peter 5. First Peter 5. And we're going to pick it up. At verse 8. First Peter 5 and verse 8. Go ahead. Be sober. Be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. You see that, brothers and sisters? He says, be sober. Be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, Walking, walking about, seeking whom he may devour. How can he devour you, brothers and sisters? With lies and deception, brothers and sisters. Those are the weapons that he uses to devour you. Keep reading. Whom resist steadfast in the faith. Whom resist steadfast in the faith. Ain't that what Christ did when he came to him telling him to uh, uh, make these stones in the bread? He said it is written, man shall not live by bread alone. Go ahead and read. Knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. And we all going through something, brothers and sisters. 
We all going through something. He's seeking whom he may devour. That don't mean me and TJ and Terrence. That means all y'all. You understand what I'm saying? He's seeking whom he may devour. That's how, why you have to stay girded up. Stay wrapped in this truth, brothers and sisters. Go ahead and read. Verse 10. But the God of all grace, whom hath called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that he hath suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, settle you. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. That means that whatever I'm going through, good or bad, I praise the Lord about it, brothers and sisters, because he brought me through it. Let's move on a little bit further. Let's go to 2 Timothy, the third chapter. This is a struggle. This life is a battle. You know how, how when we was out there in the world, easy does it. It don't, it don't matter. You know, everything goes. You know what I'm saying? Walking in righteousness comes with restrictions. It comes with directions, brothers and sisters. It comes with obedience. Can't do things the way you like to do. <clears throat> Second Timothy, the third chapter, and pick it up at verse 10. This is Paul talking. Go ahead and read. But thou hast fully known my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long suffering, charity, patience. Well, what is Paul's doctrine? Did not he say, I am a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ? That's what his doctrine is. Go ahead and read. Persecutions, afflictions, which came unto me at Antioch, at Iconium, at Lystra. What persecutions I endured, but out of them all the Lord delivered me. Out of them all the Lord delivered me. Go ahead. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. So if you are in Christ Jesus, brothers and sisters, you are going to suffer persecutions. Go ahead and read. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them, and that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through the faith which is in Christ Jesus. What's going to make you wise, brothers and sisters? The Holy Scriptures, brothers and sisters. Go ahead. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God. He says all Scripture is given by inspiration of God. Go ahead. And profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished, unto all good works. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, brothers and sisters, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. These are the weapons that you need to use to keep Satan off of you, brothers and sisters. The holy scriptures, the doctrine, brothers and sisters. Let's move on a little bit further. Let's go to Matthew, the 19th chapter. Here in this 19th chapter of Matthew, young man going to come to the Lord and ask him what he should do to have eternal life. And the Lord is going to tell him exactly what it is he needs to do to have eternal life. Pick it up in Matthew, the 19th chapter, and pick it up in verse 16. Go ahead, brother. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? 
There is none but one. There is none good but one. That is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. What are you telling me you need to do to have eternal life? Keep the commandments. Go ahead and read. He said unto him, which Jesus said, which Jesus said, thou shalt do no more murder. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Honor thy father and thy mother, and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. What you see there? You see that? He didn't even give them the whole ten. So that means that all we got to do is do them that we just read right there, and there you have it. Have you ever heard of a summary, brothers and sisters? He just summarized the Ten Commandments. Yes. If you read up above that, brothers and sisters, the young man, he said, but if thou wilt enter into light, keep the commandments, yes, plural. That's all of them, brothers and sisters. But that next uh, verse, he just summarized it. He said unto him, which? Go ahead. Verse 20. The young man said unto him, all these things have I kept from my youth up. What lack I yet? Jesus said unto him, if thou wilt be perfect, go and sell that thou hast, and give to the poor. And thou shalt have treasures in heaven, and come and follow me. But when the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. Understand something, brothers and sisters, what he just did, brothers and sisters. He asked a very valid question, and he got a great answer. Mm -hmm. Keep the command. But when he heard that he had to go and sell his stuff, his stuff, he valued his stuff more than he valued eternal life. He chose his possessions. Right? Oh man, praise the Lord. If the Lord come to me and tell me there ain't but one thing, oh thank you Jesus. <laughs> Just one? Praise the Lord. That's gone, whatever it is, Lord. You understand what I'm saying? He failed to realize that the stuff that he had, it was given to him by the Lord. It wasn't like the Lord couldn't, wait, didn't he do it? He doubled what Job had. When Job lost his sons and his daughters and all his sheep and his camels and stuff, when he kept the faith, he turned around and doubled it. So this young man, he hadn't read his scriptures, or he would have understood that, brothers and sisters. Keep reading. Verse 23. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, Verily I say unto you, that a rich man shall hardly enter into the kingdom of heaven. And again I say unto you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. When his disciples heard it, they were exceedingly amazed, saying, Who then can be saved? It's because of the emphasis that they put on their money, brothers and sisters. Uh, because it tells you in another scripture, brothers and sisters, that the, 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 the love of money is the root of all evil. Not money. It's the love of it, brothers and sisters. Go ahead and read. Verse 26. But Jesus beheld them and said unto them, With men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. But with God all things are possible, brothers and sisters. Let's go to Romans, the seventh chapter. We got about four more after this. Romans chapter 7. It's that scripture you gave me earlier, ain't it, man? Yeah. Romans chapter 7. And we're going to pick it up in verse 7. Romans 7 and 7. Go ahead and read. What shall we say then? What shall we say then? Go ahead. Is the law sin? God forbid. Nay, I have not known sin but by the law. For I have not known lust, except the law had said, thou shalt not cover. If you don't have any law, brothers and sisters, you cannot sin. What is sin? 1 John 3 and 4, it is the transgression of the law. If you don't have a law, you cannot sin, brothers and sisters. 
Go ahead and read. But sin, taken occasion by the commandment, wrought in all manner of concupience. For without the law, sin was dead. For without the law, sin was dead, brothers and sisters. If you don't have a law, you cannot sin. Go ahead and read. For I was alive without the law once. But when the commandment came, sin revived, and I died. And the commandment which was ordained to life, I found to be unto death. For sin, taken occasion by the commandment, deceived me. And by it slew me. Wherefore the law is holy, and the commandment holy, and just, and good. They always talk about that old lying Paul. They don't never bring you here, though, brothers and sisters. Because what does Paul say here? Wherefore the law is holy, and the commandment is holy, and just and good. Go ahead and read. Verse 13. Was then that which is good made death unto me? God forbid. But sin, that it might appear sin, working death in me by that which is good, that sin by the commandment might become exceedingly sinful. For we know that the law is... There ain't no such thing as a little white lie, brothers and sisters. A lie is a lie. Go ahead and read. Verse 14. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. For that which I do, I allow not. For that which I would, that do I not. But that what I hate, that do I. What did he say there, brothers and sisters? For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that do I. Go ahead and read. If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good. Now then it is no more that I do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good I find not. For the good that I would, I do not. What did he say there? For the good that I would, I do not. Go ahead. But the evil which I would not, that I do. But the evil which I would not, that I do. Understand what you're reading here, brothers and sisters. I don't want you to get this twisted. He is not talking about presumptuously sinning, brothers and sisters, here. It was what I, I mentioned a little bit. We all have some persecutions that we're going to go through. We all stumble, brothers and sisters. We all fall, brothers and sisters. We're humankind. We make mistakes. We do things. Sometimes we inadvertently sin, brothers and sisters. This is what he's talking about. For the good that I would, I do not. But the evil which I would not, that, that I do. Sometimes you find yourself doing something, and then you catch yourself. Say, I know better than that. And then like the sister say, you repent and keep it moving. That's right. Go ahead, read, because some you're going to do something else. Ain't none of us perfect. Go ahead, read. Verse 21. I find then a law that when I would do good, evil was present with me. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. But I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind. Whoa, you see what he said right there? I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind. Warring. There's a battle going on, brothers and sisters, all the time. Uh, you, you seen how them cartoons in? You got the little angel with the halo on on the right hand side, and you got the devil with the pitchfork. It's always a battle. It's always a struggle. Am I going to do right or am I going to do wrong, brothers and sisters? There's always a battle going on. Go ahead and read. And bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members, O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the mind I myself serve the law of God. So then with the mind I myself serve the law of God. Go ahead. But with the flesh the law of sin. But with the flesh the law of sin brothers and sisters. He's talking about when he inadvertently makes those mistakes brothers and sisters that it is his fleshly body that is doing those things brothers and sisters. He's sinning. You understand what I'm saying? But he, he just told you, with his mind, he keeping the laws of God. Come on. Yes. 
But inadvertently, he might slip up every now and then, as we all tend to do. Let's go to uh, Hebrews, the 8th chapter. That battle that's going on. There was a time in my life when I just did not care. Whatever it was, that's what it was going to be. If anything goes. Hey, bro, come on, let's go do it. Man, let's go. But now, I don't even get, I don't even get invited to <laughs> I am truly sanctified. Hebrews the 8th chapter, and pick it up in verse 7. Go ahead, brother. For if that first covenant had been faultless, then, sh then should no place have been sought for the second. What was that first covenant, brothers and sisters? It, it was the blood of bulls and goats, brothers and sisters, and the law written in stone, brothers and sisters. Go ahead and read. For finding fault with them, he said, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the days when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, because they continued not in my covenant, I regarded them not, saith the Lord. The law, there was nothing wrong with the law, brothers and sisters. It was the people, brothers and sisters, that wasn't keeping the law. That's what was wrong with it. Go ahead and read. Verse 10. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their mind. I will write them into their hearts. I will be to them a God, and they shall be my to me a people. I thought about this scripture a whole lot last night. This scripture right here, it's all inclusive. Do, do, do you follow me what I'm saying here? He said, for this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, said the Lord. And if he does it for the house of Israel, brothers and sisters, that means everybody is included, brothers and sisters. He says, I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts, and I will be to them a God, and they shall be to me a people. So everybody has these laws written in their minds and in their hearts, brothers and sisters. Now what happens is you choose not to do it. You allow Satan to deceive you and tell you that it's okay. You, you ain't got to keep them old laws. Jesus nailed them old laws to the cross. He, he ain't got to do them. You understand what I'm saying? You know right from wrong. It's okay if you sleep with your brother's wife. Don't worry about it. His name is John, and John ain't no good nowhere. He ain't been no good since he was a kid. But what the book say, thou should not commit adultery, especially with your brother's wife. Where you at, Hebrew? Verse 11, beginning of the line. Read that. And they shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for all shall know me, from the least to the greatest. What did he say? All shall know me. All shall know me from the least to the greatest. Go ahead. For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness, and their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. In that he said, a new covenant he hath made the first old. Now that which decayeth and waxed old is ready to vanish away. In that he said the new covenant, he hath made the first old. Now that which decayeth and waxed old is ready to vanish away. Let's go. We just flip the page right here. Flip, flip the page to verse, uh, chapter 10. Let's read a little bit of that. 
I'm adding this. Go ahead and pick it up in verse 1, brother. For the law having a shadow of good things to come, and not, every, and not the very image of the things, can never with those sacrifices, which they offered year by year, continually make the comers thereunto perfect. For then, for then would they not have ceased to be offered. For then would they not have ceased to be offered. Go ahead. Because that the worshippers once purged should have no more conscience of sin. Well, once you killed your animal, you shouldn't have been doing that anymore, brothers and sisters. Go ahead and read. But in those sacrifices, there is a remembrance again made of sins every year. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and goats should take away sin. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he said, Sacrifice and offerings thou wouldest not, but a body hast thou prepared for me. Read. And burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin thou hast no pleasure. Then said I, Lo, I come in the volume of the book, for it is written of me to do thy will, O God. Above when he said, Sacrifice and offerings, and burnt offerings and offerings for sin, thou wouldest not, neither hast pleasure therein, which are offered by the law. Which law? The animal sacrifice law, brothers and sisters, which he did away with. Go ahead. Verse 9. Then said he, Lo, I come to do the, thy will, O God. He taketh away the first, that he may establish the second. By Go ahead. The, go ahead. By the which will we are sanctified through the offerings of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. And now, every, I want you to go back and pick it up at 8 and 13. Verse 8. Above when he said, sacrifice yes. chapter 8 and verse 13. Verse 13. And that he saith a new covenant, he hath made the first old. Now that which decayeth and waxed old is ready to vanish away. And that was the animal sacrifice, brothers and sisters. That was ready to vanish away, brothers and sisters. Now we are saved through the blood of Jesus Christ. Let's move on a little bit further. Hebrews, the fourth chapter. I'm going to have some mercy. Hebrews 4. Pick it up in verse 4. Hebrews 4 and 4. Go ahead, brother. For he spake in a certain place of the seventh day on the wise, and God did rest the seventh day from all his works. And in this place again, if they shall enter into my rest, seeing therefore it remaineth that some must enter therein, and they to whom it was first preached enter not because of unbelief. Again, he limited a certain day, saying of, in David, Today, after so long a time, as it is said, Today, if ye will hear his voice, harden not your hearts. For if Jesus had given them rest, then would he not afterward have spoken of another day? There remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. There remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God, brothers and sisters. Go ahead. For he that is entered into his rest, he also has ceased from his own works, as God did from his. Let us labor therefore to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. For the word of God is quick and powerful, and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Read. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight. In, in some scriptures you have where the Lord has had it written, that they think that the Lord can't see them. But that's another story. Go ahead and read. But all things that are naked and open unto his eyes of him with whom we have to do. But what that scripture say? 
but all things are naked and opened unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. He see everything, brothers and sisters. A third of the angels, brothers and sisters, came with Christ, but he got the other two-thirds, brothers and sisters, and he got them running around here, and they see everything that you do. Go ahead and read verse 14. Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into heavens, Jesus the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, he suffered, he went through the same things that we went through, brothers and sisters, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Go ahead and read. Verse 16. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Ephesians, the fourth chapter. We've got one more after this. Ephesians 4. Ephesians 4, and pick it up at verse 4. Did I skip Hebrews? Did I skip Hebrews 4? No, we went there. Okay. Okay. You know it's in here someplace. I will find it. But in the meantime, brother, pick it up in verse 20. Ephesians 4 and verse 20. When you get it, go ahead and read. But ye have not so learned Christ. If so be that ye have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus that ye put off concerning the former conversations, the old man. That you put off the former conversation or lifestyle, the old man. Go ahead. Which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Be renewed in the spirit of your mind, brothers and sisters. That is why he has those commandments there, brothers and sisters. That you meditate on them, brothers and sisters, and that you walk in them so it can renew the spirit of your mind. Go ahead, read. And that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Wherefore, putting away lying, speaking every man truth with his neighbor. For we are members one of another. Be ye angry and sin not. Be ye angry and sin not. Go ahead. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Neither give place to the devil. Neither give place to the devil, brothers and sisters, because he's standing right there. Go ahead. Let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands, the things which is good, that he may have to give to him that need it. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth but that which is good to use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. He says, and grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. And in another place, you say, God, better, you better listen to him, because he will not, he, he will not, uh, uh, Spare your iniquity, brothers and sisters. This angel, go ahead and read. Verse 31. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be ye kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. Let's go to Ephesians, the sixth chapter, and this is last. 
Pick it up in verse 10. Ephesians 6 and 10. Go ahead. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God. What is that armor, brothers and sisters? It is the word of God. Go ahead. That ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. We wrestling not against flesh and blood, brothers and sisters, but this is what we wrestling against. Go ahead. But against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against power, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Go ahead and read. Wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the day of e in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Read. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. There you have it, brothers and sisters, spiritual warfare, I hope you got some understanding out of this lesson. And now we will have the reading of the announcements. The reading, bro. Praise God for the lesson today. Thank you, Brother Frank, for this lesson of the day. Happy Sabbath to everybody. Glad to see everybody here. Happy Sabbath, brother. Grace and peace, brothers and sisters, here at the house of Jacob. If this is your first time visiting, we will hope you will come back and worship with us again next Sabbath. You have audio lessons, and now they're on YouTube now. No more CDs. No more CDs, okay. If you have a dress code, brothers and sisters, please adhere to the dress code here at the House of Jacob. Brothers, please remove head covers of our into the building. Do not wear sleeveless shirts, feet, dying pants, any other revealing clothing. Sisters must have a head covering. This requires hats, scarves, etc. Do not wear pants, shirts, mistresses, see-through blouses, mini dresses, mini skirts, house tops of any kind. Tight fitting or cleavage revealing attire. Modest apparel only. We have Bibles and scarves. We have it for business and new members only. If you'll see and use a Bible or scar, please return before you leave. There will be no eating and drinking anything upstairs in, uh, upstairs in the carpeted area. Please restrict eating and drinking to the downstairs non-carpeted area. Weapons of any kind would not be permitted in the sanctuary. This includes but not limited to guns, knives, etc. Uh, there will be no announcement today. Only thing we have this Wednesday is Q&A. Um, what is he Brother, Corey, Brother Corey usually here for that. Uh, I think it starts up at 7. Uh, if anybody needs to come, 7.30. Come in and go over some, ask some questions. Usually held by Brothers in Chicago. Uh, it does the Q&A. So you need any answers and questions, be the perfect day to come. Wednesday. Nice at 7.30. And uh, always and always continue to pray for one another, brother, my body and soul. Happy Sabbath, everybody. Sabbath, brother. Sabbath. 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 All right, we're going to stand, close up.
Our Father which art in heaven. Our Father which art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. In earth as it is in heaven. In earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us of our debts as we forgive our debtors. And forgive us of our gifts, debts, and forgive us of our debts, as we forgive our debtors. As we forgive our debtors, and lead us not into the, and lead us not into temptation, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. But deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. For thine is the kingdom. The power and the glory. The power and the glory forever. Forever. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord God of Israel. Praise the Lord God of Israel. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.